I'm Amber Wombi, and today I'm going to be talking about panning, or more technically, balance, in digital audio software. But first, let's run a little experiment. I have white noise playing through just the left monitor at this moment, and we can see that it's around 77.5 decibels A-weighted SPL. When the right monitor turns on, we're going to see an increase of about 3 decibels, indicating that when two sources are playing the exact same sound in a room, we get approximately a 3 decibel increase, at least in my room with this sound. Most audio software has a method of compensating for this phenomenon where a mono signal sounds louder when it's panned in the center compared to when it's panned on the sides. However, imagine maybe that your room isn't purely symmetrical, in which case the signals don't combine exactly at 3 decibels. Or, what if you like to move your head around a lot? Or what if Ugh, and this really hurt me to shoot this. One of your monitors is not symmetrical with the other. Even things like each of us humans having different shaped ears, different shaped heads, we move our heads a little bit different when we're listening to music, it all combines to making it so sound doesn't combine the same for everybody in the same room with the same speakers with the same setup, blah, blah, blah. So there's not really a right way to do this. But as we look at the data, Maybe I can convince you that there is a wrong way to do it. So what I've done in each dot is create a new project at a 48 kilohertz sample rate, 120 BPM. Then I create a center to left automation over one bar of a one kilohertz sine wave at negative three decibels full scale. And here's some sample data. On the left side, we have the input level. We know our signal is negative three decibels full scale. So anything lower or greater than this is what the DAW is doing to the signal. Then we have the right channel and the left channel. And at 96,000 samples is where the pan should be terminated. That's all you really need to know to read these graphs. But before we get into the real data, I want to make sure you know that I'm only testing the default settings for each product. Because some products have a lot of settings, and I'm not going to drive myself crazy. Our door has a negative 3 decibel pan law, and it compensates the opposing side. However, due to the interpolation of automation, the pan automation didn't finish in time. Bitwig has no center compensation, but it does something I absolutely hate. It boosts the sides a ridiculous amount plus 4.3 decibels, which means, as you can see, that it's possible to clip your master channel just by changing the pan a little bit. Cubase pulls the center down 3 decibels, compensates the opposing side, and has fairly reasonable automation. Digital Performer has a negative 2.5 decibel center compensation with equivalent opposing compensation and great automation. FL Studio has no center compensation and boosts the sides about 3 decibels, which means you can clip with panning, but the automation is excellent. Ableton Live is identical to FL Studio in almost every way. Maybe they read the same white paper. Logic says it defaults to negative three decibels compensated, but it's zero decibel centered and compensated by three decibels on the sides. And the automation is terrible, as we'd expect from Logic by now. Pro Tools defaults to negative three decibels in the center and compensates three decibels on the side. That automation, I think, is due to the automation scaling in the lane that you draw in. Reaper defaults to zero decibels in the center with a gazillion options, but the side boost is rather interesting. It's about two decibels up, 50% through the pan curve, and at the end of it, there's nothing at all. No other product does this with any settings. Studio One has zero change in the center and zero changes on the side, and as we know, terrible automation. So some of you watching may be thinking that I'm treating FL Studio and Bitwig and Live unfairly, because after all, it does nothing when you just drop a file in. The file sounds exactly as it should. It only changes when you turn a knob. Therefore, user input, something changes, right? Well, my problem with that is that I don't think a user should ever be able to make things worse by turning a pan knob. It's something so simple that why should you be able to ruin a project just by tweaking the pan a little bit? I mean, it's the idealistic solution versus the practical solution. So thanks for watching. I strongly encourage you to not trust me at all. Assume that I'm lying about all of this. Go and test it yourself. On AdmiralBumblebee.com in the DAW v. DAW series, there's an article explaining how you can do this, plus a bunch of extra information. So head to AdmiralBumblebee.com 
And if you appreciate how much time it takes to make these videos and the fact that I try to only put out fairly original ideas, or at least original spins on old ideas, patreon.com slash Thanks for watching.